short a short luteal blah, blah, a short luteal phase. Progesterone, you ladies are asking about it, so today we're talking all about how to increase progesterone naturally. And stick with me to the end because we're going to talk about three specific nutrients that you can eat or take that help increase progesterone naturally. Welcome back to Fertility Mom. If you want science-based tips, tricks, and secrets to help you get pregnant naturally and faster, then hit subscribe to my channel and hit the bell so you know when I upload new stuff to you every week. Okay, so you ladies are asking me a lot about progesterone. You want to know how you can increase it through your diet or through supplements. You want to know how you can increase your luteal phase and all these sorts of things. So we're going to talk about that today. Uh, progesterone, as you know, if you've watched any of my other videos, I'm going to link to them in the cards as we go along, so just keep your eyes out for that. Progesterone is one of your reproductive hormones, and it's the most important one in your luteal phase. So, it's derived from cholesterol, so you have cholesterol that goes into pregnenolone, and that turns into, into uh, progesterone. And it's your pregnancy hormone. It's progest, progest, progesterone, progestational. Got it? Yeah, progestational, yay, I got it. So it is produced by your corpus luteum and your adrenal glands. Now your corpus luteum, if you remember back from one of my first videos, is what your follicle turns into. So you've got your beautiful luteal phase, you've got ovulation, and after you ovulate, after the follicle ruptures and your egg comes out, the follicle it collapses in and it becomes the corpus luteum. And the corpus luteum is what produces and releases the majority of your progesterone in your luteal phase. And it does many things. And one of the main things that it does is it continues to build your endometrial lining so that a fertilized egg can implant. And it keeps your lining there for the duration of the, of the luteal phase. And a normal luteal phase is around 11 to 14 days or 12 to 14 days. Usually anything less than 10 or nine is considered a short luteal phase and you'll have a luteal phase defect. So what do we mean when we talk about increasing progesterone? How can we do that? Well, we do that through increasing your egg health, your egg and follicle health, because if your follicle is super, super healthy and really good, that, that follicle is gonna turn into a really awesome corpus luteum that's gonna be able to produce a lot of progesterone. So what we're aiming to do with increasing progesterone is actually increasing your egg and your follicle health. And I did a video uh, just a couple of days ago about that one, specifically about eggs. And remember, we do that through four things. So we target eggs through diet, 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 diet and nutrition, lifestyle, stress management, and diet, 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 got it? Diet is really important. Also supplements. <laughs> but diet is one of the most important things. So we're gonna be talking about foods today, of course. And so how do you know if it's something that it's a, is a problem for you? How do you know that progesterone is an issue for you that you want to target the follicle or target the egg to actually get those numbers going up? Well, again, if you are tracking your cycle and you see that your luteal phase is only nine days, eight days, seven days, you have a short luteal phase and you're gonna to wanna to do stuff to increase that, that period of time. So if you do have a, a fertilized egg, it will actually have enough time to implant and you will hopefully go on to have a healthy pregnancy. If your luteal phase is too short and you do have a fertilized egg, it won't have time to implant and it will just, be, it'll just come out with your normal period. Another thing that you might see is a lot of spotting. You might be spotting four or five days before you actually start your period. Or you might be spotting like the whole luteal phase. Some women spot right after they ovulate, then they spot a couple of days later, then they spot a couple of days after that, and then they spot for another four days. That's a sign that your progesterone is low. You also might be getting headaches. You might feel very irritable, anxious, depressed. You have thyroid problems. You have weight gain. All of these kinds of things are symptoms that you might have low, um, low progesterone. But in the fertility world, we're, we're looking at your luteal phase. That's a really good way to, to see if you have a progesterone deficiency. So chart your cycles, see what your luteal phase looks like, and then you'll kind of get a better idea if this is a problem for you. 
Okay, so now we're gonna talk about three really vital nutrients that you need to make sure you're getting in your diet and your supplements to help increase your progesterone. And the first one is magnesium. Magnesium does a ton throughout the body, but one of the things that it really does is it supports your pituitary gland in the production and release of FSH, LH, and your thyroid hormones. And if you remember, FSH is follicle stimulating hormone, and that's what really drives the maturation of your egg. Without enough FSH and without enough LH, you're not going to have that really, really good um, egg maturation. So you want to make sure that you're getting a lot of magnesium so that you can have a good amount of FSH to support that whole follicular phase of your cycle. Some foods that are really, really good in magnesium are nuts, like Brazil nuts. Brazil nuts are great, and you only need a little handful, like six or seven. Don't go crazy on Brazil nuts. Number one, they're really big. They have a lot of stuff in them, and you can, you can overdo it with Brazil nuts pretty quick. So just a small handful of Brazil nuts, avocados, and salmon. Fatty fishes, salmon is really, really good for magnesium. One thing I do recommend as well, and I take this all the time, I take it pretty much nightly, is a magnesium supplement. And I, I prefer the powdered kind. You can just put like a teaspoon in your water. And I'll link to it, I'll put the links down below so you can actually see the kind that I'm talking about. But a magnesium supplement is great because, especially at night. So if you're gonna take a magnesium supplement, take it at night because what it does it actually helps in the production of melatonin. So magnesium is essential in production of melatonin and the more melatonin you have, the better your eggs are because what we're finding now in, in research is that melatonin has actually been found in the follicular fluid itself, all around the egg, inside the egg, all that stuff. So it's very important in the actual maturation of the egg. So if you don't have enough melatonin, then that could actually be an issue and they're actually, supplementing with melatonin now for IVF cycles and that kind of thing. So if you can do something to help your body produce more melatonin, why wouldn't you do that? And it's so easy to do. So I supplement with a little bit of magnesium at night. It helps you sleep. It helps you relax. It helps you calm down. It helps you get to sleep because it helps you make more melatonin. And also magnesium supplementation helps with irregular menstrual cycles. It helps with painful, heavy flow. So if you're somebody that has a really heavy period, it's pretty painful, and you have a little bit of trouble sleeping at night, throw the magnesium rich foods in your diet and put a supplement on the, on the back end of your day. Put it in before you go to bed, 20 minutes before you go to bed, have this little drink in it, it'll do you a world of good. Oh, before I forget, little thing about magnesium supplementation, don't go crazy with this. If you take too much magnesium, you can give yourself a little case of disaster pants. Disaster pants. So just take the recommended amount on the bottle. I use this brand called Naturally Calm. I believe the, the dose is a teaspoon, but double check. And you're gonna get the great effects of the magnesium. No disaster pants, which is the goal, okay? No disaster pants. Another nutrient you're gonna wanna make sure you're getting enough of is zinc. Zinc is super important. It's the second most prominent trace element in the body and it is literally found everywhere and in everything. I mean, this guy's got his nose up in everybody's stuff. So, zinc is really important, again, for supporting your pituitary and increasing your FSH. It also is important in your melatonin production, which we've already established is important in egg maturation. And, most importantly, it helps decrease oxidative stress and oxidative damage on your mitochondria. If you remember from my last video, mitochondria are the guys that we're trying to actually help and improve when we talk about improving egg quality. So when we're talking about trying to increase progesterone, we wanna increase the egg and follicle quality, which means we want to increase mitochondrial productivity. So zinc helps do that, and it's a great, powerful thing. And research is showing that 75% of us are deficient in zinc. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you're concentrating on eating lots of zinc rich foods, which would be meats, shellfish, including oysters, which some of you may not really love oysters, but oysters are so awesome in the zinc department. So if you like them, suck them on down. So meats, shellfish, oysters, uh, eggs, nuts, and seeds. And those are gonna be some things that you're gonna to wanna to concentrate on for getting some zinc in. Okay, and the third nutrient that's vitally important to help increase your progesterone is vitamin B6. 
Guys, the B vitamins, you're gonna hear me talk about B vitamins because they're so uber, just incredibly, intensely, ridiculously, super powerfully important. They're just important. B vitamins are great. You want them all and you need them all in high amounts to get full fertility. B6 specifically is important. Again, it boosts your, your melatonin levels. So you got all three of these elements are part of the melatonin cycles that helps to actually produce more and that's important in the egg maturation. And B6 is also really important for your mitochondrial health, which is again, one of the biggest things that we're targeting is your mitochondria. Vitamin B6 deficiencies are actually correlated with mitochondrial defects and dysfunction. And they're showing in research that when they have vitamin B deficiency, that their mitochondria are also suffering. So we wanna make sure that we're getting that in there because that can actually help increase the egg health itself. B vitamin rich foods, you're gonna find it like beef, beef liver, other meats like chicken, turkey, you're gonna find it avocados, spinach, acorn squash, butternut squash, nuts, all those things are really great for making sure that you get your vitamin B6. Meats especially have all of your vitamin Bs, especially B12, we've talked about that in almost every video, but meats have a really high level of all of your B vitamins. So definitely make sure that you are getting your Bs your bees, get your bees, not your Z's. Also get your Z's, but get your bees, Z's and bees. Okay, ladies, I hope that was really helpful for you. There are so many things that you can do to increase your egg health and increase your progesterone naturally. I encourage you to keep sticking with me because we're gonna talk a lot about how you can change your overall health, your fertility health with diet and nutrition and lifestyle and all those great things. And it's all science-based because I'm, I'm a science junkie, I've got two science degrees and that's what I do, that's my nerd zone, I love it. So subscribe to my channel, hit the bell, I'm gonna give you great new stuff every week. Join the Facebook group, download the five step fertility boosting guide at my website and stay tuned because I've got an awesome fertility boosting nutrition program, it's the first of its kind, it's gonna be awesome, it's gonna help you so much. Stay tuned for that, get on my email list so you'll be the first ones to know and I will see you next time. Bye ladies. <laughs>